good afternoon, you guys. Today's question breaks the mold a little bit. It's, did demons have sexual relations with women in Genesis 6-4? Now, I've dealt with this question before. In fact, I've heard it so much that it actually kind of drives me crazy at this point. But since it is such a controversial question, and since I agree with Hank's answer anyway, I'll just read to you what he says. Genesis 6-4, Hank writes, is one of the most controversial passages in the Bible. As with any difficult section in Scripture, it has been open to a wide variety of interpretations. It is my conviction, however, that those who hold consistently to a biblical worldview must reject the notion that women and demons can engage in sexual relations. I reject this interpretation of pagan superstition into the Scripture for the following reasons. First and foremost, the notion that demons can produce real bodies, and have real sex with real women would invalidate Jesus' argument for the authenticity of the resurrection. Jesus assured his disciples that, quote, a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have, end quote, Luke 24, 39. If indeed a demon could produce flesh and bones, Jesus' argument would not only be flawed, it would be misleading. In fact, it might be logically argued that the disciples did not see the post-resurrection appearances of Christ, but rather a demon masquerading as the resurrected Christ. True. Furthermore, demons are non-sexual, non-physical beings, and as such are incapable of having sexual relations and producing physical offspring. To say that demons can create bodies with DNA and fertile sperm is to say that demons have creative power, which is exclusively a divine prerogative. If demons could have sex with women in ancient times, we would have no assurance that they could not do so in modern times, nor would we have any guarantee that people we encounter every day are fully human. While a biblical worldview does allow for fallen angels to possess unsaved human beings, it does not support the notion that a demon-possessed person can produce offspring that are part demon, part human. Genesis 1 makes clear that all of God's living creations are designed to reproduce according to their own kinds. Finally, the mutant theory creates serious questions pertaining to the spiritual accountability of hypothetical demon humans and their relation to humanity's redemption. Angels rebelled individually, are judged individually, and are offered no plan of redemption in Scripture. On the other hand, humans fell corporately in Adam, are judged corporately in Adam, and are redeemed corporately through Jesus Christ. We have no biblical way of determining what category the demon humans would fit into, whether they would be judged as angels or as men, or more significantly, whether they might even be among those for whom Christ died. Hank says, I believe the better interpretation is that the sons of God simply refers to the godly descendants of Seth and the daughters of men to the ungodly descendants of Cain. Their cohabitation caused humanity to fall into such utter depravity that God said, quote, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth men and animals, and creatures that move along on the ground and the birds of the air, for I am grieved that I had made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, end quote. So, uh, I hope that is sufficient. There's plenty of more that can be said on this topic, uh, but I hope that does some service to the question for you. Anyway, tomorrow's question, Lord willing, is, is it ever morally permissible to lie? That's a great question. Hope to see you then. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.